In this video, I will show you how to send emails using ASP.NET Web applications. This can be useful to reset user passwords, to confirm orders, and to confirm submitted contact forms. So I will show you how to send emails using SendGrid. So here let's type SendGrid. Let's go to the first link, it is at SendGrid.com. Then here we can click on Pricing. So here we can see that we can use SendGrid for free to send up to 100 emails per day. Now we need to create an account. In my case, I have an account. So let's click on Sign In. So after creating a new account, we need to wait a few hours till the activation of this account. And then we need to verify an email address that will be used to send the different emails. So now let's verify a new email address. So we need to click on Settings. Then Sender Authentication. Then here we need to click on Verify a single sender. Then here we need to provide the details of the email address that we want to use. In my case, I have already verified an email address. So this is the email address that I have already verified and it will be used to send the different emails. Now to use SendGrid with ASP.NET, we need to click on Email API, then Integration Guide. And because we want to use SendGrid API, we need to select Web API. So let's click on Choose. Then let's select C Sharp. And here we need to follow these steps. So first let's create a new API key. We can call it as the name of the ASP.NET Web application. For example, I will call it Best Store API Key. So this is not the API key itself, it is the name of the API key. Now let's click on Create Key. So this is the API key that we need to use with our ASP.NET Web application. Then we need to install SendGrid package. And then we can use this source code. So here, let's copy this method. And then let's create a new class that will be used to send emails. So this class will be used by other classes. This means that it is a service and I can create it in the services folder. So here in the services folder, let's create a new class. And we can call it Email Sender. Then here let's paste the source code that we have copied. And here we can see that we have some errors. This is because we need to install the SendGrid package. So we can click on this button. Then Install Package SendGrid. Then Find and Install Latest Version. Then let's add the other required packages. Now let's initialize this variable with the value of the API key that we have created. So let's copy this API key. Let's delete this text. Let's create a string and let's paste the value of the API key. So this method is called execute. Let's rename it and let's call it send email. It is a static method. So this is not required. We can keep it as an ordinary method. So let's delete static and let's make it a public method. So here we have the from variable. It contains the email address that will be used to send the different emails. So we have to replace this value by the email address that we have verified on SendGrid. Then here we have the name of the sender. We can remove this and replace it by the name of our application. So here let's write best store for example. Then here we have the subject of the email. It is a static value. So instead of providing the subject as a static value, we can provide it as a parameter to this method. So let's delete subject from here. 
and let's create a parameter called subject of type string. Then let's replace the destination email address by a variable. So let's delete this and let's write to email, which is the destination email address. Now let's add this variable to the parameters of the method. So here we need to add a string called to email. And here we have the username. So let's delete it and let's replace it by a variable called username. Let's add this variable to the parameters of the method. And here we have the email message. So let's replace this static value by a variable that we have to provide to this method. Let's call it message. Now let's add this variable to the parameters of the method. So just here, let's add a string called message. Also, we don't have a HTML version of this message. So here we can keep this variable empty. Now we can save this file and we can use it to send emails. So let's go to our controller. It is contacts controller and it is available in the controllers folder. And when the user creates a new contact, after registering the contact in the database, we need to send a confirmation email to the user. So just here, after adding the contact to the database, we need to send a confirmation email. Then let's create a variable that will contain the email subject. We can call it email subject because we already created a variable called subject. So it is a string. Let's call it email subject. And it is equal to contact confirmation, for example. The second parameter required by this method is the destination email address. So the destination email address is already available in contact dto.email. Then we need the username. So the username will be the first name plus the last name. So here let's create a variable of type string called username. The last parameter is the message that we want to send. So let's create another variable, which is the email message. It is of type string. Let's call it email message. So here we have dear the username, then a confirmation that we have received the message. And here we can see that we will also provide the message that is submitted by the user. So we have to add the message that is available in contact dto.message. Now let's create an object of type email sender and let's call the method send email. Then let's provide this method with the required parameters. So we need to provide the email subject, the email address, the username and the message itself. So this method is of type asynchronous method. For this reason, we need to wait till the end of the execution of this method. So here we have to add dot wait. Now let's test the application. Let's create a new contact. Then let's fill this object. Then for the email address, I will use my email address to be able to receive the confirmation email. So this email address is the sender email address, but also it will be the receiver email address. Now the phone number is optional, so it can be empty. Let's provide a valid subject ID, one for example. Then let's provide a message. Let's click on execute. So here we can see that we have a new contact. Now let's take a look on my email account. And here we can see that I received this email address. So this is the subject. This is the name of the sender, which is the name of our ASP.NET application. Here we have the first part of the message. And this is the message submitted by the user. 